Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Ganit. My name is Samir Sudhana. So guys, I'm going to cover 200 quant questions, must do quant question for SNAP. I'm going to move chapter wise, right? So in this whole series, I'll be taking questions chapter wise, right? From every topic, every concept, which I personally feel is relevant for SNAP, I'll be discussing all those questions with you. And in this whole series, we are going to cover 200 must do quant question for SNAP. As I informed you earlier in the strategy video of SNAP, that 200 reasoning, 100 reasoning ability question for SNAP is has has already been uploaded on the channel. Wo already channel pe upload ho chuke. Uh, jin bachcho ne plus course pe an academy pe mere sessions nahi dekhe, uh, plus ke right you can refer to this video of 100 reasoning ability question for SNAP. Now, uh, the first topic that I am going to pick in this would be factorial. The reason I am picking this topic is. In most of the questions, right? If you look at the last seven to eight years questions of SNAP, you will find uh, questions from factorial, right? In the previous year papers, I'm not saying that in every uh, SNAP paper you'll find questions on factorial, but yes, factorial is a concept where from where SNAP is asking questions. So you should know, you should do, you should you should solve the standard questions of factorial. So I'm going to discuss five to six questions of factorial with you in this video, which I personally feel are quite relevant for SNAP exam. Now, here is the first question, right, from the factorial topic. This is the question where we are supposed to find out the unit place of the given number. Unit digit place, unit digit of the given number. How do you find that? See this. What is a factorial, guys? N factorial means the product of first n natural number. N factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 up to n, right? So now, guys, one factorial raised to power one factorial will be one. We'll give the unit digit as one. Two factorial we know is two. Two raised to power two is four. Three factorial is six. Six raised to power six. Six raised to power any number will always give you six at the end. The next number would be four factorial raised to power four factorial, right? Now, what is four factorial? It is 24. 24 raised to power 24. Now, the unit digit of this number will be dependent on 4 raised to power 24. I'm sure you know the basics of unit digit. The, if, if I'm finding the unit digit, the unit digit will depend on the unit digit itself. Now, you should know the concept of cyclicity. We know that 4 raised to power 1 will give you the unit digit as 4. 4 raised to power 2 will give you the unit digit as 6. 4 raised to power 3 will give you the unit digit as 4. Again, 4 raised to power 4 will give the unit digit as 6. You see that? The cyclicity of four is two, uh, is two only, right? If I have, if I have an odd power of four, I'll be having the unit digit as four. And for the even powers, for the even powers, I'll be having the unit digit as six. Now, you, know, you see that 24 is an even power. So the unit digit of this number will be six again, right? Now, the next number would be 5 factorial. You see that 5 factorial is basically 120. 120 raised to power 5 factorial. Now, this number has 0 at the end of it. Now, any number having 0 at the end of it if and raised to power any other value will always give you the 0 at the end of it, right? And then if 5 factorial is having a 0 at the end of it, can I also say 6 factorial will also have the 0 at the end of it? So after all the factorial values after four factorial will be having zero at the end of it and zero raised to power anything will always give you the zero at the unit digit. So all these values will finally be giving you zero as a unit digit. So in my whole number, right, in this whole number, I will be, I will be having, right, if I, if I add all these values, right, you see that I'll be having the final unit digit as one plus four, 5, 5 plus 6 would be 11, 11 plus 6 would be 17. So the final unit digit would be 7, and that's the correct answer to the question, right? 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6, that's the correct answer. 1 plus 4, 5, 5 plus 6, 11, 11 plus 6, 17, unit digit would be 7. So 7 is the correct answer to the question, guys, right? Now let me take you to the second question of factorial. All you need to know is a basic of factorial to solve the question like this, right? Now let's move on to the question number 2. Here is this question. Consider this equation. We are supposed to find out the number of zeros at the end of this whole expression. Okay. Now, to solve this question, you should know the concept of finding the zeros in a factorial. Say this, guys. We know that 1 power of 10 is made with a combination of 1 power of 2 and 1 power of 5. Right. 
two power of 10 will, will be made the combination of two powers of two and two powers of five, right? If I ask you, there's a number n, which is two raised to power three multiplied by five power four, what will be the number of zeros at the end of this product? The number of zeros at the end of this product will be three. Why so? Because I can make, the, the number of zeros will depend on the combination of two and five that you can make. You see that in this question, the total, three combinations of two and five that I can make, right? There'll be one extra five, but that is of no use to me to make zeros because zeros are made with the combination of two and five only. Now two into five is 10, 10 raised to power three multiplied by five will give me a number which will be followed by three zero. So the combinations of two and five, the pairs of two and five that you are able to make will give you the number of zeros, will decide the number of zeros, right? And secondly, in any factorial. So if I want to find out the number of zeros in any factorial, I need to see how many combinations of two and five are possible. Now in any factorial, every second number is a multiple of two and every fifth number is a multiple of five. So number of zeros will be dependent on number of five. The reason being number of fives in a factorial, number of fives in a factorial will always be less than number of twos in a factorial, right? So number of fives in n factorial will definitely be less than the number of twos in n factorial. And we know that the lowest power of these two number will decide the number of zeros at the end of the product, right? If I have less power of five and more powers of two, the number of zeros will depend on the less power of five. So to find out the number of zeros, I need to find out the number of fives in, a, in, in an, any, any n factorial. Now, this is the number that I have. Look at the number five factorial. See that five factorial is having only one five, right? So the number of zeros, number of zeros in five factorial is only one. So can I say five factorial have only one power of 10? But it has, but it is raised to power five factorial, which we know is equal to 120. Right. Now, the second number that I have is 10 factorial. Right. So 10 factorial, you can see that 10 factorial total in total have two, two uh, 10 factorial in total have two fives, right? You can see that when I divide 10 by five, the two fives that I'll be getting. Right, so 10 factorial will have two zeros at the end of it, raised to power 10 factorial. Plus 50 factorial. Now you see that, now you see that there is an addition, right? Do I need to, do I need to take the whole addition value here? No, the reason here is, in fact, I, I don't even need to calculate this. Why so? Because when I'm adding two numbers with some zeros at the end of it, right? For example, if I'm adding 100 with let's say 10,000, then the result 10,000, right? Then the resultant number will be 10,100. And this resultant number will have the same zeros as the number of zeros in 100. So when you're adding two numbers, the number of zeros will be dependent on that numbers which have less number of zeros, right? For example, if I, I'm adding 7,000 with, let's say, uh, uh, three lakh, three lakh, right? Then the resultant number, you can see that would be three lakh seven thousand. Now the zeros in this resultant value is dependent on the number of zeros in this particular number because it has less number of zeros. So therefore the resultant number also have the same zeros as this number, right? So now you see that 10 raised to power one raised to power 120 will be having total 120 zeros, right? So let me just clear this whole thing. Write it down again. So we have seen this, guys. This number have one power of 10 raised to power 120. Plus, I know that this is having two power of 10 raised to power 10 factorial. Now, this have much, much higher number of zeros as compared to this. But when I add all these values, the resultant number will be having the same zeros as the number which is having the least number of zeros in the summation. And the least no number with the least number of zeros in this whole summation is this my first number. So therefore, the number of zeros in this whole, summation of these four terms, in the summation of these four terms, will be same as the number of zeros here. How many zeros this number has? This number has 120 zeros. So that's it. This is my correct answer. 
number of zeros in this whole expression will be 120. And that's the correct answer to the question, guys, right? Now, let's move on to the question number three. Find the remainder when this number is divided by seven. Now, this is a remainder-based question of factorial. You see this, guys? If I divide, if I divide this whole number by seven, if I divide this whole number by seven, one factorial when divided by seven will give you a remainder of one. Two factorial when divided by seven will give you a remainder of two. Three factorial is six. Six when divided by seven will give you a remainder of six itself. Now, four factorial when divided by seven. Four factorial is 24. 24 by seven will give you a remainder as three. Five factorial is 120. 120 when divided by seven will give you the remainder of uh, one, right? And then you have six factorial, right? Now, how do you find the number of zeros in six factorial, uh, uh, the remainder when you divide six factorial by seven? You see that uh, uh, you can either find, do it directly or you can simply write it down as six into five factorial by seven. We know that five factorial when divided by seven is giving you a remainder of one. So the final remainder will be six. Now you see that all the numbers which will be coming after six factorial, the first such factorial would be seven factorial. Now seven factorial is a multiple of seven. Now seven factorial is seven into something. When I, when I divide this number by seven, the remainder would be zero itself, right? So can you see that all the numbers after seven factorial when divided by seven will be giving you the remainder of zero only. In fact, all eight factorial also when divided by seven, right? Eight factorial is also a multiple of seven. So this number when divided by seven will give you a remainder of zero again and so on. So all the numbers still 99 from seven factorial to 99 factorial, all the numbers will be the product of seven. So all these numbers when divided by seven will be giving a remainder of zero only, right? So the only remainder that you will be getting will be from the first six, from the first six digits, guys, right? From the first six factorials. Now, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, 13 plus 6 is 19, 19 by 7. And then the remainder you can see will be equal to 5. 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 6, 9, 9 plus 3, 12, 12 plus 1, 13, 13 plus 6, 19, 19 by 7. Uh, will give you a remainder of five. That's the correct answer to the question, guys, right? So all the, every time you're solving a question of remainder in terms of factorial, just try to look for the number, right? Where will you start getting the remainders of zeros, right? The moment you start getting the remainder of zeros, all the factor after that number will always give you zero remainder, right? So all you have to do is just solve the value for the first six digits, for the first six numbers, that's it. You will get your answer, right? Now, moving on to the next question, question number four of factorial. Look at, look at this question, guys. Question number four. Find the remainder, find the remainder. Okay, find the remainder. When the sum of the factorial of first thousand positive integer is divided by 90. A similar question, guys. So this, one factorial plus two factorial plus three factorial plus four factorial and so on, plus five factorial and six factorial and so on, up to up to 1000 factorial. Now this number is supposed to be divided, this number is supposed to be divided by the number 18. You see that 18, they're not trying to factorize 18. 18 is two multiplied by three power two. Any factorial which will be having one power of two and two's power of, two power of three will be divisible by 18. Now look for the first number, where three will be appearing for two times. You see that six factorial is the first number, six factorial is the first number which is having two powers of three, right? Six factorial is what? It is one into two into three into four into five into six. Now we have one three here and one three here. And every second number is a multiple of two. So can I say when I divide six factorial by 18, the remainder that I'll be getting will be equal to zero, right? So one factorial is one, two factorial is two, three factorial is six, four factorial is 24, five factorial is 120. And all the numbers after six factorial will be giving me a remainder of zero, right? So all I have to do is 
divide this number by 80. Right. So now just do the addition. 1 plus 2 plus 6. 24 when divided by 18 will give you a remainder of 6. Right. 120 when divided by 18 uh, will give you a remainder of 12. Now do this addition. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. Plus 12 is 27. 27 when divided by 18 will give you a remainder of 9. This is the correct answer to the question. Right. Now, now let's move on to the question number 5. So that's the question number 5, everybody. Let's solve this. This one is a tricky one from factorial, the remainder of two square one factorial plus three square two factorial and so on. What is the remainder when this number is divided by 19? You see this guys, this type of series of question, right? You have to find, you first have to generalize this term. You see this guys, all, can I, can I generalize this whole term as n plus one whole square multiplied by n factorial. This is a general term of a series. Now this can be written as n plus one multiplied by n plus one multiplied by n factorial, right? Now n plus one into n factorial, you see that this is n plus one into n plus one factorial. And this, you can see that n plus one is now n plus two minus one multiplied by n plus one factorial. Now this can be written as n plus two into n plus one factorial minus n plus one factorial. Now this is n plus two factorial minus n plus one factorial. This is the, this is the term finally that you need to write it down that every term of this series, this is two square into one factorial where n is equal to one here. Can I write down this series as n plus two factorial? That means one plus two. Now the first term can be written as three factorial minus two factorial, right? Because we know that this, this whole thing can be written as n plus two factorial minus n plus one factorial, right? Okay. And the next you can see that I can put n as three here, here. So this would be four factorial minus three factorial. Then the next I can put n as four here. This would be six factorial minus five factorial. So n as, uh, I put n as three here. N as, n as one here and three minus two, then two, then three. So this would be five factorial minus four factorial, right? And finally, the last term would be n as 17. 17 plus 2 is 19 factorial multiplied by 18 factorial. Now you see that all these terms will be getting cancelled, right? Finally, you will be left with only these two terms, 19 factorial minus 2 factorial. Now this number when divided by 19, what is the remainder? 19 factorial by 19, the remainder would be 0. 2 factorial is 2, 2 by 19, again is remainder is 2, minus 2, that is remainder as 17. So when I divide a number by 19 and I'm getting a remainder of minus 2, 19, my divisor is 19, remainder is minus 2, the final answer would be 19 minus 2, that is 17. You need to add negative remainder to the divisor to get to know the positive remainder, 17 would be the correct answer to the question. That's the question number 5. Right. Now, here is the last question, question number six of this uh, video. And I'll be taking another topic in the next video, guys. What's the remainder when 19 factorial is divided by 361? Now, this question is based on the Wilson remainder theorem, guys, right? What does the Wilson remainder theorem say? Uh, uh, chances are less that you'll be getting a question of Wilson remainder theorem, but Snap is asking, in Snap you'll find a lot of questions of factor in the previous year Snap papers. So just to avoid any risk, I'm taking this question, right? See guys, as for the Wilson remainder theorem, when P minus one factorial is divided by P, where P is a prime number, P is a prime number. The remainder will be equal to P minus one, 
remainder would be equal to p minus 1, right? So now you see this 19 factorial is supposed to be divided by 361. We are supposed to find out the remainder. How can I use Wilson remainder theorem here? Now, this is the Wilson remainder theorem that you are supposed to use, right? This is the Wilson remainder theorem that you are supposed to use. 19 factorial. Can I write down 361 as 19 multiplied by 19? Now, 19 factorial is 19 multiplied by 18 factorial divided by 19 multiplied by 19. Now, this gets cancelled. Now, 18 factorial when divided by 19. Now, my question is, what is the remainder when 18 factorial is divided by 19? But you keep this in mind that your cancellation factor is 19 here, right? Now, can I apply the Wilson remainder theorem here? Yes. You see that P is my prime number. P is 19 and P minus 1, that is 18 factorial when divided by 19. The remainder, as per the Wilson remainder theorem here in this case, would be equal to 18. But that's the remainder when I'm dividing this number by 19. And to get to this, right, I have used a cancellation factor of 19. So my final answer will be obtained, final answer will be obtained when you will be multiplying the cancellation factor into the remainder that you have got. 19 into 18 is the correct answer, which is 361 minus 18 into 18 is 324 plus 18, right? That is 342. 342 would be the correct answer. That means 19 factorial when divided by 361, the remainder will be equal to 342. This is the question of Wilson remainder theorem. And this is the Wilson remainder theorem that I have written out here for you people. You please go through it. And this is the type of question that you might, uh, might get in SNAP. Chances are less because in, in terms of level of difficulty, this is quite high. Uh, SNAP questions nowadays are coming at low level of difficulty, right? So guys, uh, this is the first topic factorial that I have covered. So I'm gonna move Throughout this whole series of 200 quant questions, uh, uh, I'll be taking chapter-wise questions, right? Topic-wise questions. So from av on every topic, I'll be covering five to six questions. And also 100 reasoning ability for SNAP and OMITs has already been uploaded on my YouTube channel, Easy University. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and you can watch this whole series of 100 reasoning ability questions for SNAP. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot.